All right, guys, welcome back to another tutorial. I am going to be making this guy jump for you today. We did it before. We're going to do it again. It's really easy. All we have to do is a copy paste job for with code that we've already written. So it shouldn't be any explanations. We can just kind of speed run this. First thing we're going to want to do is like with the first script, we're going to want to grab all of our variables. We're going to have to set these to protected when we get into the actual script itself but we're not going to need to do that right now. So I just copied and pasted all of them. I'm going to get rid of that header and we are going to put protected in here. I'm going to copy this and we are just going to paste it over and over again in front of here. Everything here needs to be at least protected. Everything will be used by the child. So we're going to want to know. We're going to want to make grounded public I meant to say serialized, god damn it. Just so we can make sure that we've got everything working as of right now. I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Uh, these two were public as well, uh, which means that these, if you press alt and the arrow keys, we can move them to the bottom. I think that looks nicer. We'll probably get rid of these eventually, or some of them at the very least. We got jump force and jump time. Those are the important ones that we need. That all looks pretty good. Good. I'm thinking about making stop jumping serialize, but we're not going to right now. All right, now that we've got our variables, we can actually use them. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to jump into update because that's where we make the jump actually happen. How did we make our jump happen in player jump itself? Well, we did a little bit of this stuff. Uh, we're going to want to go into start. I've just realized and we're going to want to put this into start. So that's where we're starting with. Right, so we've got our update. What did we do in update and player jump? Well, we did a whole lot of stuff, actually. Uh, we did a bunch of checks on animation and stuff like that. The ones that actually are based off of our input, we don't want in here because the enemy is going to have a different input system. They're not going to be pressing buttons. But this down here, this if statement, just takes our vertical velocity, our y velocity, and this up here takes our whether, whether we are grounded or not and tells us whether we can jump. That's going to be important. So we're going to copy this and we're going to put this in here. Uh, save. And then we're probably going to do the same. Yep, we're going to grab this and we're going to throw this in under here. Cool. So we're starting to put a script together check whoops that didn't do a double check vertical velocity oh yeah about the code editor i'm using visual studio code it says at the top uh, i'm using that because it opens faster and i've been using it because i've been developing in python and c++ all week visual studio is really good for unity i don't find it's very good with anything else so i'm trying to make visual studio code work with unity uh, it's a preference thing. You guys don't have to change if you don't want to. If you do want to, it's really easy to install a bunch of like extensions and things to make things work. So you got the debugger for Unity, Unity tools, Unity snippets, and is there anything else I've got installed? No, that's just it. So you can install those three extensions. That you get them from searching Unity uh, and clicking on the little extensions button over on the side. And these will do a bunch of autocomplete stuff that you would probably need. All right, jumping back into our project and focusing up. We got our character.cs is close to completion here. We need a couple more things. Under sub mechanics, we're going to create our first abstract function. Nothing to worry about here. Uh, we are just going to write a protected. Actually, I wonder. No, damn. Trying to cheat. Never try and cheat. Abstract. Uh, void and we're going to call this handle jumping all you need to do is put a semicolon at the end we're not defining anything it's abstract it doesn't do a lot uh, normally what we would do with this is we would call jump inside here but we don't necessarily know that we're going to so like we don't know when we're going to call uh, jump necessarily so because it's based on input it's not like movement where move is determined based off of a fun uh, sorry not a function a variable that we're giving the move function 
jumping is purely based off of when we want to jump. There's a bunch more balls and stuff. So we're actually going to define a function called jump, which I've already written. Protected void jump with the two curly bracket, uh, round brackets, sorry. And then we've got our regular setup. So we're going to do the physics code here. Uh, we're going to put it in the parent so that everything jumps the exact same way. And then we're going to, in the child, write how the jump is handled. Right? So we're going to define the, uh, we're going to define this in the child. That is what an abstract function does. See, nothing to worry about. They're pretty simple. We're going to jump into, oh, sorry. <laughs> Pun not intended, happy accident. We're going to go into here and we're going to grab this particular line rb.velocity is equal to new vector to rb.velocity.x and we're going to put this in here and that's all we need to do for that function so now to increase things like readability we are going to have our jump function be called inside the the, the parent and we're going to have all the physics handled in there and then we're going to tell it when to handle the physics inside here and it's just going to say jump which is much nicer to read so now what we want to do is we want to copy from in between if grounded uh so that line there and we're going to stop before we get to the the part that checks if we are falling so before if rb.velocity.y is less than zero so we're going to copy this and we're going to jump into our player.cs we're going to define that uh thing that we had written before so we want to create a protect, uh, how do you spell things? We're going to create it as an override. We've done this before. Void, handle jumping. No, nope, it's the first one. And it doesn't take any arguments. We're going to paste that in there. And this is going to be all of our jumping code. The only difference I'm going to make is and this is once again a stylistic choice, but I reckon it's an important one, is we're going to change this to jump. One-line functions are not usually recommended, but also making your code readable is, and when it's this basic and like the smaller change, it doesn't matter. So we can almost close this, but we're going to need our gizmo so that we can see the uh, gizmos.drawsphere because I like having that at the bottom of my thing. We're going to have mental note to ourselves. Handle layers needs to be put in fixed update. So we're going to do that as well. So copy this line here. Control C. Jump back into characters. Oh, we have on draw gizmos already written for us. How helpful. So you could, you could copy. Oh no. Oh, all right. Input dot get button down jump blah 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 blah. We've done that. I'm gonna fold the cop uh, fold this because it's quite long. Handle layers. We're gonna need that. So we're gonna go back into player jump and we're going to get the handle layers script. Uh, so we have an if and else statement inside there. We're gonna want to copy those and we're going to want to paste them inside handle layers. So I, the only difference, you could have copied that, uh, copied the entire thing and pasted it. You would just need to change private to protected. Because uh, once again, we're accessing it from inside the children. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the Ondra Gizmos thing that I was doing and somehow messed up. I'm not entirely sure what I did there. That's just going to be drawing our little sphere. Does this code work yet? <laughs> All right, we're going to jump onto player here. Let's have a look. We have the variables that we want. We're going to tag ground as ground. We're going to grab our players ground check, which we've done before. Rado circle, we set to 0.03. Uh, we're going to set jump force to 2.5, and we're going to set jump time to 0.3. I believe 0.3 was correct, but I could be wrong. You guys are setting it to whatever you want. There is no reason I should be able to see direction right now. I don't want to see direction there's no reason to see it uh so we're going to get rid of that it doesn't need its serialized status speed is the only thing i need there and 
hopefully upon pressing play we should see a game where we can jump i think i think i forgot to call something yep i definitely did okay inside player we need to actually call handle jumping Uh, so that is a problem. And then we need to make sure we call handle layers inside fixed update. We're not going to do it in that, in, in this fixed update though. We don't have one in here. We're going to do it in the parent fixed update. So we're going to go under here and go handle layers. Otherwise, when we jump, it's going to look really weird. So that should be fine. Handle movement, handle layers. All right. Jumping back in. That one was intentional. Hop. 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 We did it. We did it, game developers. We solved the internet. Oh, there's a lovely bug there. Oh, uh, I had to change to a capsule collider because he was falling through the ground. I forgot to say that. It was being really annoying. If you don't like a capsule collider... Don't worry about it. You don't have to change. If it, it, it's purely for me, it was falling through the ground and it was super annoying. That's it. That's all. Don't worry about anything else. Also, we're going to be adding another one of these little balls, uh, one for each of his feet. So that's going to be fun. Uh, stick with me. And we're going to be doing an attack animation next episode where we make this, this guy uh, kill bad things. So see you in the next one. Thank you to Mr. Zethko for sponsoring uh, for supporting this video. Bye-bye.